You can't run a Jeep Gladiator like you can a real Jeep. What am I talking about? morning everybody how are you today pretty good here and that's right you can't run a jeep gladiator like you can a real jeep now what am i talking about well first of all i'm not talking about taking it out and running the trails or maybe you grab your mojave and go out and run it through the desert i'm not talking about that kind of thing i'm talking about the diehard true off-road rough trail ruts and grinding jeepers out there so first of all, why? Well, the length of it to begin with. More precisely, the wheelbase. I mean, look at how long this thing is. Look at the distance between the wheels, right? Again, it's okay if you're out running nice, smooth gravel or maybe dirt roads, something like that, or maybe the sand in the desert. But when you're running off-road and you're trying to maneuver through more difficult areas, you might end up sitting on top of something and just teetering, right? I mean, it is long, particularly compared to the Jeep Wrangler that I show, the real Jeep. Next up, and this is a no-brainer, I think, and that's the money. Look at what these things cost. I mean, mine arguably is low end, right? It was about 40, I think it's stickered for about 42, 43,000, something like that. That's 40 some thousand dollars, right? Are you gonna take that thing out and trash it? Are you gonna just blow away 40 grand? I don't know. Remember when Jeeps used to cost like 10, 15, maybe $18,000? Still a lot of money, right? But it's much easier to take that $18,000 Jeep out and get a few dents and scratches and things like that in it. And that's okay. You can stomach that, right? But when you take your 40, 50, $60,000 Jeep Gladiator out and put a dent in the side or maybe even knock a fender off or something, that hurts a little bit, right? And you can't even get them cheap right now in the used market because they're brand new. They just don't exist out there. So it's not like you can run out and pick up a Gladiator for, I don't know, 15,000, something like that. You just can't do it. It's way too much money, way too high priced to take out and beat around on the trails. Again, not the simple easy off-road stuff, which it can handle no big deal, but definitely not taking it out and beating the crap out of it and throwing away all that cash. Next is the technology that's in it, right? I mean, it is packed chocked full of technology, all kinds of electronic stuff, computers, gauges, all kinds of things, right? And if you take it off road, and you know, it's kind of funny because we all want all this new tech and stuff in our vehicles, right? Even the off-roaders, I think. But when you have all that tech and stuff in there, you're just opening up the door for all kinds of issues. You know, honestly, computers were not meant to be thrown in vehicles anyway. Now take that vehicle off-road, jostle it around, bump it all over the place, maybe even get a little air once in a while. And what do you think's gonna happen to all those little minute connections and things? And people wonder why they have problems. You know, I often wonder if that's not why Jeep is known for having issues, right? Because people buy them and it's a Jeep. It should be able to take anything, right? Well, it used to be able to. But people get them under that mindset and they take them off-road and they beat the crap out of them jostle around all these little connections and all these little soldered parts and pieces and things, and then they break. And people wonder why there's trouble. You know, I talked about a little while back, there was a guy who had a, a Jeep Gladiator, and he decided he was gonna run it through a mud hole, right? Now, granted, he went a little too far probably for any vehicle, particularly any Jeep, but he basically submerged it in this muddy, mucky mud hole, right? And it ruined it, all kinds of problems. And he's whining and complaining that Jeep isn't covering it under warranty. Well, first of all, that was extreme anyway. Why would Jeep cover it under warranty? 
but just an example of what they are not meant to do anymore. They just can't take it. They're just too damn nice. I mean, you know, it isn't like the old days when you get a Jeep and it was like bare bones inside, right? I mean, you were lucky to have any padding in the seats and maybe any carpet in it whatsoever. Well, now they're a lot more plush, right? I mean, if you look at the top level Jeeps, you've got leather, maybe it's a fine Corinthian leather. I don't know, but you've got leather and embossed seats like the Mojave. Uh, you've got all these nice surfaces and things. Everything's all nice and pretty and shiny. Who wants to take it out and ruin that? I mean, the thing that comes to mind is, you know, you go out and you buy, let's use the Mojave as an example. And then you get in it and you've got mud flying all over the place because you've got the top off or the windows down. You know, the way a Jeep is supposed to be. Mud's flying all over the place and it gets in that nice orange stitching. You know, where it says Mojave in the seat? That will ruin it. You're never going to get that out. And you can imagine one day of, of fun, and it would be fun, admittedly. But it's ruined. It's going to cake in there, and now that nice orange lettering is going to be orange and brown. Dirt. They're just too nice. They're way too nice now to take out and do those things to. And there is one other thing I thought about, and that is the materials. You know, Randall, buddy of mine, was over here with his Mojave, and we were talking about the hood, for example. The hood on his is steel. The hood on mine is aluminum. How much is that going to take? You know, if you're out driving under low areas, I mean, if you're really roughing it, right, and you're driving under fallen trees and stuff, and they happen to contact your hood, it's aluminum. It's not going to take it. Not like the old all steel can go through anything, Jeeps, right? So I just think there's a combination of reasons why it's not like the old real Jeeps, like you can't run them like a real Jeep, because they're not. They're not anymore. The, the day of the real Jeep is over. Not that it's a bad thing necessarily. There's trade-offs with everything. I mean, it's an awesome truck. It looks good. It's still plenty durable for everyday life, right? And I think they're awesome with all the tech and stuff they have in them today, but you're never going to be able to do what you used to be able to do with the real Jeeps because they've simply changed, they've advanced, and that old rough it kind of thinking with the Jeep is really kind of gone. Even though Jeep does like to kind of push that image a little bit still, I mean, in all honesty, they've got to be sitting in the boardroom and saying to each other, or maybe behind closed doors, I can't believe we're telling people to do that with these fifty, sixty thousand dollars Jeeps. They won't take it. The tech won't take it. The panels won't take it. Wouldn't it be curious to be a fly on the wall in one of those meetings? I think it would. So anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Is the Jeep Gladiator or any model that Jeeps put out, puts out right now a real Jeep as comparing it to what you used to be able to get? I'd be curious to know what you think. Also, real quick, I have two other channels. Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. And Rob Motive Civic, all about my adventures with the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Civic Sport. Check them out. If you like them, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.